Okay, let's go to 250.6. This deals with objectionable current. Now, objectionable current is kind of like a, it's kind of a little vague. The code doesn't tell us exactly what it is. And let me see if I can make it simple, if I can. Equipment grounding conductors, Jacob, that's the, the wire that we go from the box to the switch, and we probably didn't show a picture of equipment grounding conductors, and we, we need to show that at some point inside here. Your equipment grounding conductors are not supposed to be used as a neutral conductor or a circuit conductor. They're bare or they're green or whatever the case may be. They're, they're there, right? They're part of the effective ground fault current path in the event of clearing a fault. So let's just see an example of what might be considered an effective ground fault current path. Here's a meter on some, I don't know if these are <coughs> grounding conductors or bonding conductors. Or, they have to be bonding conductors in some capacity. And you can see that there's 31.28 amperes. These bonding conductors are only there in the event to clear a fault. They're not there to be used as a circuit conductor. So that would be clear. So if you put an amp meter on any of your equipment grounding conductors in a panel, you got all these little green wires, and you put amp meters on there, you have an equipment grounding conductor in a panel, and you're carrying current. Well, that wire is just sitting there. It's insulated. It's just waiting in the event of a fault to be part of the effective ground fault current path to open it. It's not supposed to be carrying current. Here is a 230-volt pump motor, and somebody wants to add a 115-volt filter. Well, they ran two hots and an equipment grounding conductor out to the motor disconnect, or maybe even putting in a receptacle here, right? We can even just put a receptacle here. So yep. somebody wants to put a receptacle out there like, well, you know what? I got two hots and a, an equipment grounding conductor. Well, let me just put a receptacle. And what do you do? You pick up one hot. And since there is no neutral, well, I'll just connect it to the case. Because wouldn't the electrons then travel on that equipment grounding conductor and go back over to the source? So would that, will that water filter work if I take a hot and connect the neutral, which is 115 and it's 230, would that water filter then have 115 volts? Yep. Do you follow that? Well, now what are you doing? You're using that equipment grounding conductor to carry neutral current. Jacob. Is the case energized at that point? No, it's not. This is a, this is a, a this is this neutral voltage. Even my son, master electrician, is trying to understand, but but you took this and here and this and that. Let me see a simple example here. Electrons are leaving, and let's say this piece of equipment is rated 115 volts, right? If this rate 115 volts, that means you have 115 volts coming in here, then how many volts are coming out? 115. No, because you can't have 115 and 115 and have 115. It's voltage drop. So less than 115. It's going to be zero. You, we ought to put a voltmeter on this graphic here. Yep. If I put a voltmeter between here and I show 115, that means one point is zero and one point is 115, or you could not have measured 115. When you use that voltmeter, we haven't described it, we haven't showed how to use a voltmeter, but if this was a resistor, and this is taking two wires to it, and this is rated 115, and I'm taking 115, well, if I take a voltmeter, and I touch one and I touch another end, it shows 115. But if this was 115 and this 115, then a voltmeter would show me what? Zero, because they're the same. See, a voltmeter measures the difference of potential. There's a difference between those two points. Not the same point. Take a voltmeter and connect it to the same terminal in a panel. What's it going to measure what? Zero, because you're touching the same point. Does that not make the... So Jacob's struggling with the voltmeter. Brian? Well, I think this is probably one of the earliest lessons that you have to teach an apprentice when he first starts dealing with circuits that could potentially be live because the white wire doesn't ever appear that it has any voltage on it, but it is carrying current. And it's a very, very confusing topic that all of the voltage has been consumed or voltage drop. I don't know what would be the best term to use. Um, by the time it gets to the neutral bus. But if you lift that up and disconnect the circuit, now you have all the voltage again. Because it's not a complete circuit. So it's very confusing, very difficult. Because, Jacob, you're young and you don't have the experience in using voltmeters, you, you have no way to understand, even though you can mathematically, all I can say is that if you have 115 volts coming in and this is a voltage drop of 115 volts, then that means that there is nothing going back. 
it's zero coming back, but it's coming in at 115, and it loses its potential because that was the purpose of the potential. So when you take zero, not really zero, right, guys, but it's okay. Zero, and you connect to this case here, and you use this case here, you're, you're not going to be danger, but... You do have you current take, flow. We have current <clears throat> flow. And so now you put an amp meter on here, and, and by the way, that's a good point. Yeah. If you have current flow on that green wire, yep. right? And use an example here. Watch this. I have current flow, right? What is it danger if I put us if I stand here and I touch this and I stand on the earth, it's not dangerous because it's zero. Okay? But if I took that wire off and I became in series, and I'm a thousand ohms, in series with whatever. Let's say 10, this is here, this is probably probably only like about 15 ohms. Well, now I'm going to have the voltage distribution in a series circuit according with the law of proportion that if this resistance is 15 ohms and I'm 1,000 ohms, well, then pretty much I'm going to be touching 120, 100, in the case here, 120, 115 volts. And that'll be the worst shock of your life right there. Because you're not expecting the white wire to get you, to kill you. Yep. So in other words, if you hook up something, you run a hot wire, and then you have the white wire coming back, and then you touch the white wire, and then you touch an enclosure, you are in series with that circuit. You follow what I'm saying there, Jacob? You're in series with that circuit. Well, if you're in series with the circuit, when you're 1,000 ohms and that load is 100, is, is 100 ohms, well, then you're going to get proportion, you're going to get... 90% of that voltage across you. But if you take that wire and you put it on a terminal, this right here, well, then if you touch that while it's there, well, then you're not in series with it, right? You're in parallel with it. If you're standing on the earth and that all is connected back to the earth, so you're going to be in parallel with that potential of practically zero. This happens people getting in signs. I, I know of a case of a, a young man. He crawled under a sign. It was hot. He hooked up the two hot wires, and he had left, what, two white wires. With me? He got a hold of the two white wires. He was like 26 years old and he died. Oh, the breaker was on? I'm sorry? The breaker was on? Breaker was on. <coughs> breaker was on. And just hook up the hot wires, get that out of the way. Whoo, you know, the danger wires are gone. And like you said, the worst wires you can get shocked on is a neutral wire because you never expected that. It's no difference in potential. It's just that you're not expecting that. So back over here, trying to answer your question, Jacob, making this connection causes this to be objectionable. Cost is current to travel on there. We can put an amp meter on there and we can actually measure it. Maybe we should put an amp meter on there and show some kind of measure in there. That's not going to hurt you unless you happen. What about if you're here in the panel? If you were here in the panel and this was a green wire and the wire was open, as a matter of fact, here's an example here. And this is about as complicated as you could possibly get. I think of a graphic. And I'm not quite sure I can make it. So, Jake, I'm going to watch you. And if you can concept what I'm trying to say here that I think people watching the video are going to be able to get it. This is showing you a scenario of one of our video team members. His, his brother-in-law got killed. Watch here. This right here is showing three faces, <clears throat> a brown, orange, and yellow coming into a panel. Okay? And so this is called a panel board. And this is going to be 277 40 volts coming in here. And they took the breaker and they turned it off. So this is the breaker in this panel. They turned it off going over to this delta Y transformer. So there's a transformer sitting on the ground. There's a breaker in front of that. They turned that off because they, they, he wanted to work on this transformer. He didn't want it to be hot. But in that same panel, they had a single pole breaker and they went up and over to supply a 277 volt light. But on the load side of this transformer, this 480 volt primary, secondary is 120, 208, three phase, and it was turned off, right? Because if you turn off this breaker, you turn off the primary, which means the secondary has nothing, and that means this panel has nothing, and there's a main breaker right here, and this main breaker being on or off doesn't matter because there's no power at this panel here. But this panel here had 120 volts, and it was supplying, uh, let's just say, a fan, a bath fan, okay? Well, it just so happened that the 120 volt circuit and the 277 volt circuit, both of them went into the same junction box. So now you have a, a 277 with a neutral and a 120 with a neutral. And when the electricians hooked it up, they reversed the neutrals. So the neutral for the 277 
was connected to the 120, and the neutral for the 120 was connected to 277. They just crossed the two wires. You follow what I'm saying? Mechanically, you got two hots and you got two neutrals, and they they crossed them. Okay. Now watch what happens when you cross the circuit. Electrons leave the 277. They kind of come up here, go to the 277 volt load, out of the load, come back down to the neutral, but not return on the 277 neutral, return down on the neutral of the 120. It goes down to the 120 volt panel, which has a neutral. The neutral to 120 volt panel is being supplied by the secondary side of the transformer. The secondary side of the transformer, you'll see later on, has a wire that's called a system bondage jumper. That electrons travel on the system bonding jumper and the equipment, which is required to have an equipment grounding conductor, and it gets back to the primary, and these electrons are all flowing, and they're going back to where? The source. To the source, right? But watch what happened. They crossed the neutral. The light was turned on, okay? And he was making this connection right here. He was connecting the XO terminal to the case, and he got killed. Even though this breaker was off. But look what happens. If current goes out here, goes to this load, comes back down here, comes on this neutral, and from this neutral comes over here, and it goes along here, are we carrying current, neutral current, on these circuits? Yeah, that's called the objection. You don't use an equipment grounding conductor as part of the neutral current carrying conductor. So anytime you put current <coughs> carrying conductors or you use a, a, an equipment grounding conductor for circuit current, purposes. You're not expect. Listen, if you open up a hot, right, you, you know you're going to get killed. If you open up a neutral, you will eventually learn you can get killed because you didn't expect the neutral to get in series. But you never expected. If you drive a ground rod, it's not required by the code and there's no effective ground fault current path and the pole is energized. Well, you never expect just connecting the wire you know, at nighttime, you get out there with the light. They put it in the daytime, and somebody knocked it over. At nighttime, you're there, right? The lights come on. There's a fault in there. You don't know about that. You go over to the ground rod. You're not expecting grounding and bonding conductors to be serving any kind of purpose to carry current. And if they do and you get in series, you're going to get killed. And that's the hazard. Jacob. So how do you, how do you know if you cross them or not? <laughs> well, you don't. But what you can't, Brad, tell us what you do if he, they cross them and you didn't know. How would you know? What should you well, do? Well, so I want to make a comment and then I'll, I'll talk about that. So people look at this sometimes, I think, and they think that this is an isolated occurrence. Mm -hmm. The reality of the matter is I actually can't even count the number of times that I've run across this. Um, and a lot of it is just it happens. Somebody doesn't know what they're doing. Another common one is instead of crossing them, they just put them all together which effectively would result in the exact same thing in this scenario. Jack, <clears throat> what he's saying is that electricians have a tendency to go get the blue wire nut. Right. The blue <laughs> one is bigger big than blue. the red one. And, and, and you say, you know what? I, actually, I tell you a story of this. I have a, a, a five-story building that was done in Romex that was not supposed to be done in Romex back in the 1975. And that's the first time I've seen equipment grounding conductors. I didn't know what to do with those inside there. And I had lights on all the different levels on the floors. And one was brighter and one was dimmer the lights outside of the building, and I could not get them to be right. I didn't really know it was an open neutral scenario. You know what I did? What did I do? Tied all the neutrals together. Got a big blue wire nut. Put that puppy on there, guess what? All the lights lit up exactly they're supposed to. But guess what happens? Somebody turns off that circuit because they know it's not on, but because I had connected the neutrals all together, well, now I'm using the neutral. I'm using that neutral for another circuit that I didn't know that. You might have two panels in a house, right? And you have one panel over here supplying this. You have another panel over here supplying this. And you turn off the breaker in this panel because you're working on that circuit. Well, you don't know, but somewhere in that building, there was a box where that neutral was crossed with another one. And you get killed in the panel. You turn off the circuit breaker in. So there's a lot of scenarios where somehow a mistake could be made that the electric, I didn't know, I should have done that, I could kill somebody inside here. I didn't realize somewhere in a box they could have crossed something and that's going to cause somebody to work on something. So how do you find out, guys, if you work, you turn off the breaker, you're in a panel, you want to make sure, I don't want to get killed, how do I know this, what do I do? You put your amp clamp on all the conductors of the circuit, including the equipment grounding conductor. I, I can honestly tell you, I have numerous times pulled an equipment grounding conductor off not checking it because I didn't feel hey, like watch, watch grabbing. What happens, watch what happens. Watch what happens. Didn't feel like grabbing my meter out of my bag, and when I pulled it off, there was a spark. Uh oh. And and that's exactly what you say because that's usually an expensive spark. 
almost every time it's an expensive spark. That your equipment grounding can die. Even if you put it back really fast. <laughs> you can't put it back fast. You're not as fast as electrons. Because yeah. you see it, you're like, oh, that's too late. It's like when you see the smoke come out of something. You just re-spark it. You can't put smoke back in, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's too late at that point inside here. Yeah. Okay. So what we're saying is this. If the equipment grounding conductors are not carrying any current, if you put an amp meter on there, then it would be zero. But if the equipment grounding conductors are not carrying current and you put an amp meter on it and it is carrying current, then that means what? That means there's been a cross somewhere, and that's where the violation comes in here. And that's the hazard that we have to be very, very careful for, is an objectionable current, is that, is that shock hazard. Okay, on that one? I know that's busy, and hopefully, Jennifer. Let's just not forget that that's only part of the time that you're going to actually see the current on it, right? You're only going to see the current on the meter if there is a load on it at the time you put it on there. But you won't get yep. shocked if there's no load. Correct, but it could no, be you will turned get on shocked. in the mid Yeah, you will get shocked. You're right. Even if there's no load on it, you pull that neutral off. It, it, no, you won't get shocked because there's no, there's no load. So you can't but at the time it. you do it, if it wasn't on and yet it got turned oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. After. You're fine, and then all of a sudden you're working yeah. on it. Well, then somebody so turned on the I'll, lights. I'll tell you a story about that exact thing. I wasn't going to say it, but since you brought it up, I was actually working at a Kmart distribution center on a second floor mezzanine. Now, you know, this was back before lockout, tagout stuff was real easy to get a hold of. So we always did the red tape over the switch and the red tape over the breaker. So, I mean, I did my due diligence. I turned off the light switch. I was changing ballasts. Turned off the light switch, red tape. Turned off the breaker, red tape. I even closed the panel door and put red tape over the panel door. But all the lights were off. I'm impressed. I, I, I mean, I, no, I was really, I was scared. I was scared. It was 277. I, I never would have done any of that, but that's good. Listen, it was 277. I was like But scared. I'm impressed. Okay. Okay. So I'm up there, I'm on a 10-foot ladder on the mezzanine, and I'm changing ballasts, and I have my arm hooked over the red iron Yep. so that I didn't fall off the top step I wasn't standing on of the ladder because we don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> and I'm changing this particular ballast, eight-foot ballast, and the store manager came in, and he's like, oh, all the lights are off. And he pulls the red tape off the switch and turns the switch on. Oh, they're still off. Walks over. Now, they had had a lot of problems with their lights, so they had been in the breaker panels a lot. Walks over, pulls the red tape off the panel, opens the panel, pulls the red tape off the breaker. Huh, wonder what all this red tape's all about. <laughs> Turns the breaker on. I just happened to be with my bare hands twisting the conductors together when he turned the breaker on. While you're on. twisting on the... Yeah. Thank God. My, I fell off, and it was a nice soft wood mezzanine. It wasn't a concrete mezzanine. So then I bounced off the mezzanine and said some things I probably shouldn't have said. But um, In there. you can definitely... <clears throat> have something turned off, and then it's not off anymore through no fault of your own. So that's a very good point. It's always dangerous.